Welcome back to the Win With Dice podcast, a podcast featuring members of the Win With Dice team. I'm Calvin, and I'm joined here by Ramon. Howdy, folks. This is your first time listening to the Win With Dice podcast. This is the podcast all about tabletop RPGs. Calvin and I will take a casual approach to the hobby, so we like to talk about the games that we run, the games that we play, and the cool, wonderful people we get to experience the hobby with. If this is your first time hearing about tabletop RPGs or, you know, that kind of sort, uh, go find yourself a table. Go have some fun. It's a real good hobby to uh, to dive right in. And if you are a player at someone's table, maybe it's your turn to be the GM. Indeed. So this week, we're going to be looking into more of the Kane RPG. Uh, specifically, we're going to look into some character creation, maybe create an example character. I haven't done this yet, so I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Also, because we should probably say this up top, I just want to mention, if you're interested in tabletop RPGs like Kane or Lancer, the Starfinder, Pathfinder, any of those, then please like and subscribe, all the YouTube stuff you know how to do if you're on YouTube, or subscribe if you are on Spotify or any other podcast platform. But let's dive right in. Uh, however, before we get into the uh, cool, fun character stuff, we have to get to the most important part of the show, the Win With Dice Weekly GM Tip of the Week. Yes, the Woman Dice Weekly GM Tip of the Week, brought to you by Calvin. Thanks, Calvin. Yeah. So this is something that's come up for me because I'm trying to figure out the uh, next leg of a certain campaign, and I was having a bit of trouble putting some ideas together. I had some notes on like what some of the characters wanted to do, but I was trying to figure out like what sort of adventure might be able to happen next. And my tip for this particular week, uh, my little tidbit of information is like you should hang on to your old notes. If you're making notes of things that happened in your game, of certain encounter ideas you may have had, things that didn't come up, or plot threads that were left dangling and didn't necessarily get resolved, or even if it was something that you meant to bring up and just you never had an opportunity to put it into the game, but it's something that logically would have been existing in the background, hang on to that information because you could always bring it up later. It could always inspire some new ideas. You could always re- you could always create something new with it. Uh, you could always use it to push the campaign in a different direction, and you could always just like throw back to prior events and then make them relevant again if certain other plot threads have been wrapped up. Yeah, I mean, I think that like always keeping notes, even though I'm the I am the napkin GM where there's no no notes required <laughs> to have fun. Um, uh, you should definitely keep that stuff, especially if you are a uh, GM who likes to build lots of combat encounters maybe you decided something isn't right or off don't delete that stuff just make a version two and then maybe you could go back to it and rework it to pull some ideas from yeah exactly like there's there's you don't really gain anything from deleting stuff if you've come up with something it's better to just like even if you just have like somewhere where you just sketch down stuff or just write down your brief ideas those are always worth hanging on to because you thought they were a good idea at one time for sure. I mean, like a OneNote is really powerful or even like a Google Drive with like, you know, uh, some Google Sheets. Uh, usually I like to plan out encounters if I do do any planning in Excel because <laughs> I can like no. shuffle stuff around uh, easily with like filters and stuff like that. But yeah, use cool online tools and uh, yeah, don't delete your notes. Uh, just save them for later. Exactly. All right, Ramon, let's get into Kane and character creation. So uh, a couple weeks ago, we had talked about it for a bit. The setting sounded very cool. The concept sounded very cool. You're basically these, uh, I don't know if investigator is the right word. You're more like an agent. These psychic agents who are dealing with these powerful manifestations of people's emotions that can not only cause harm and damage, but they can go grow into very great scales of power. And you are tasked with uh, not letting them cause any extremely apocalyptic events or localized apocalyptic events really (laughs) or you know just really stop them from causing lots of mass casualties there's always a couple of weird things happening people getting hurt and then it just gets worse from there right yeah you are supposed to stop the worst part you have a similar power to these entities but you are able to control it in a way that makes you more useful as a weapon than as an entity that needs to be destroyed which is very fortunate for you. 
Well, I mean, yet, you know, <laughs> like there is always the possibility. Um, again, quote unquote one fortunate. Of those, one of, yeah, built into this game, you if you're gonna if you're you are gonna die uh, in this game as a character, you can just tell the GM actually no and just fully transform into uh, the, the the sin, the quintessential sin, which is the bad guy, the super psychic ghost that you are trying to defeat, and then you know the ramifications of that can be figured out in later sessions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, let's just get into, I guess, how to create a character in this game, because we did speak on it before. Your character is an exorcist who has been born with a high concentration of grace, and that's this phenomenon that allows humans to manifest psychic powers. Uh, quoting from the book here, you draw on the power of subconscious thoughts and emotions that are buried in the human psyche. Yeah. Spooky, spooky stuff. Pew yeah. mind lasers, probably. <laughs> um, okay, so first off, uh, let's go to the making an exorcist. Uh, it's pretty simple. So there's some questions here. I'm not sure if you wanted to answer these questions beforehand or just start making a character and then maybe we can double back at the end and so you have a better idea. I mean, I don't have a specific idea in mind right now, so those questions might help prompt some ideas. Okay, well, the first question is, uh, how do you first manifest your powers? What kind of powers are you thinking about? How would they, like, how would they first manifest? Or, like, what would they be? Um... Yeah, how, how did you first manifest your powers? I mean, it doesn't have to be, because inherently, the exorcists have grace, which is the ability to see all the paranormal psychic entity and energies and stuff like that. And um, that might be a thing. Or maybe there's some catastrophic nonsense where your powers manifest in like a critical moment, maybe saving your life, maybe harming somebody else. Like that that could be a, a pull from that. Oh, I guess some sort of sudden burst or something like that. Yeah. Well, so my, my character um, named Griffin, uh, one that I played in, in, in the one game of Kane I played. So they first manifested their powers as their house was on fire. And they managed to teleport themselves outside of the house, but was able to save themselves, but wasn't able to save their family. So, and that's, and then Kane, and then, um, yeah, Kane just came and picked, picked them up being like, oh, <laughs> you're orphaned already. Cool. Like <laughs> get in the truck. Like, <laughs> that saves us one step. <laughs> yeah. You're going to psychic jail till you become a cop. <laughs> a psychic cop. Yeah. I kind of like the idea of something like, focused on like mentality or mind like someone either manifesting their powers in a way that either like messes with the minds of people around them or um it would be interesting if it was, if it was something that happened in like a very subtle way that they didn't notice was happening until it built to a critical impact like they were just affecting the memories of people around them very slightly in very small ways over a long period of time like a month or even just like a week <laughs> Um, okay. And then at some point there was a larger burst. I might have to get into more specifics when I see the actual powers, but that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm, pic- I'm picturing a very like mental power focused thing more so than like physical uh, okay. powers. Okay. Altering memories. You altered, uh, slightly altered the uh, memories of people around you until it became too much, and maybe you overdid it. Yeah. <laughs> like um, it just happened completely cool. accidentally at first. Like what if? Oh, what if? What if? <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be relatable to any of the powers that do exist, but what if it was someone who just over time accidentally erased the memory of themselves from the people around them? Ooh, that would be kind of cool. All right. I think that there might be some some cool stuff in there for that. I'm not that familiar with all of the uh, blasphemes, but definitely, definitely pretty cool. I like that idea. So like we're, we're going to we're going to wing it. it. <laughs> If I see a cool power, I'll just change everything. Oh, no. I orphaned myself. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but it would would be like, okay, well, now now I'm I'm kind of falling in love with this idea, so hopefully we can make it work. But I'm kind of picturing, like, (laughs) it starts very subtly with people who don't have a very strong, like, connection to them. Like, maybe, like, just, like, co-workers they don't really talk to or something like that. But then as it goes on, like, it affects their friends, it affects their family, and then suddenly their family is like, who are you, and why did you put pictures of yourself in our house? <laughs> like, basically, like, 
everybody who isn't a super psychic person is just like, uh, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. All right, next question is, is your sin seed in your brain or your heart? This is where you that you pulled your psychic powers from. Seems like brain then, if that's the direction this character was going in. All right, all right. So what do you hide in the deepest parts of you? Ooh, what secrets would such a person keep? I'm kind of picturing someone like this would like act very aloof. Like they would act like they don't care what happens to them or what happens to people around them, even like other agents around them. They're just sort of doing this job because they have to. But I think deep down they're, this is like a very sad and tormented person. This is a, this is going to be a very cheerful episode, by the way. Uh, I think deep <laughs> down this is a person who genuinely misses the life they had before, but they would never let anyone know that. They would never let anyone know they missed this thing that only they remember. And I'm going to push that even further. I'm going to say there's part of them that probably thinks maybe maybe they did mess with reality somehow maybe the things they think they remember never actually happened and everybody's memories were correct and they just didn't exist there mm. oh that's that's a pretty that's a pretty spooky thing to to hold <laughs> on to well that actually uh will lead into like the last question but the second to last question is is your hand your hand i mean i hate to say i don't know but they would be uncertain that would be one of the things it would be like did it was this life I remember real? Did I take over someone else's life? Did I manifest this thing out of nowhere with some power that I don't know I have yet? Yeah, they would have. If if their fear is uh, like if they have that constant fear in mind, they would have no real way of knowing for sure. Mm, like the body that they right. think they exist in could very well be someone else's entirely. All right, that's that's a pretty good answer. I don't, there's no wrong answers here, by the way. <laughs> okay, there's, there's no test here. This, this isn't going to no. come up on the quiz. No. And the last question, do you remember the face of your mother? Uh, I guess it's a yes with an asterisk. They remember who they think is their mother. <laughs> Am I me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, okay, I, cool. I hope we can make this character work. <laughs> <laughs> all right cool all right so the next thing you would have to do in this order um to select your skills so i don't know if you have a list of the skills Kevin. so i think we're just doing this with paper and pen yeah I'm, I'm just writing down in a notepad um, all right cool so what you're gonna do is you're going to select all your skills to one then increase two of the skills to two and then reduce then reduce three skills to zero okay so let's list out the skills so let me get you figure that out <laughs> so we've got force, which is applying direct force or violence, direct fighting. Conditioning, which is balance, getting around on foot, sprinting, athleticism, basically. We've got coordination, hand-eye coordination for shooting, throwing, and catching. We've got covert, which I think I'm going to use some of, which is your stealthiness, your sleight of hand, mm -hmm. your lockpicking. Interfacing which is um, oh, your technology-based skills or your vehicle and device skills. Uh, surveillance, which is your power of observation, um, your power of perception, I guess, surveying and tracking. Uh, investigation, which I think is going to be a very important one, to examine things in detail or uncover hidden information, your research and studying. Negotiation, mm -hmm. which I'm pretty sure I'm going to be bad at, uh, rely on words to influence others. Sway a lot. Actually, maybe. Hmm. No, I'll, I'll, I'll have to. I'll have to see what kind of what we end up with. Uh, mm -hmm. But negotiation is like, I guess, bargaining with others. Authority, your leadership, your force of will, your organizational abilities, your intimidation, and connection. Your ability to connect with others, draw on those connections, and empathize with others. Oh. Maybe this is the one I'm bad at. Maybe negotiation, I could make that work. <laughs> Maybe. But I like all of these because these skills are very specific to that kind of uh, spy, kind of paranormal, kind of investigative kind of vibe. You know, I, I do like inter interface is such a funny word because it's like, 
it, it feels really foreign, but like the things that you could do with air, air interface is pretty funny. It's like flip a car while performing a U-turn at 50 miles per hour. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> you just you just become uh, Dom. <laughs> oh no. Fast and Furious, <laughs> which um, I think would be pretty fun of a character to make. If you like, what's my deeper secret? Family. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I only like some of my family. Yeah, but I actually only like some of my family. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, yeah, I can't go and uh, pick. So yeah, uh, so so everything starts at one. Um, okay. Yeah, pick two to go to two, and then pick three to go to zero two to go to two okay what would this person be good at um i don't really see them being athletic enough for stuff like force or conditioning covert i feel like they could work with if i'm gonna put anything to zero it's probably gonna be the more like communication skills like connection or authority yeah that makes sense i mean like it sounds like your character doesn't confront people very well if they're making them forget who they are <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like I, 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 can't, I can't see them like wanting to talk to people because they don't want to go through all that all of the time. So they might just be bad yeah. at doing that. But like keeping to themselves, investigation, I feel like they might be good at. So, so just pick two. So, I mean, covert is kind of cool because you can do all those cool super spy stuff. Uh, if you don't find this character to be like an action hero, then I would stay away from like force conditioning and coordination. You know, mm -hmm. maybe they're clumsy or whatever. You could do that. But yeah, I wouldn't increase those unless those like that. Those are like the action hero kind of kind of things, right? I'm kind um, of between covert investigation and surveillance. Um, I'm just trying to pick two of those. Decoding physical and greater occults. Ooh. Okay, I don't know, man. It's <laughs> up to you. <laughs> you should just do investigation and surveillance. Um, that sounds kind of cool. And just leave covert to be one if you like it. Yeah. Okay, I can, I can, I think I can see surveillance. So I'm, I'm kind of picturing because I'm sort of trying to relate this to other games I'm familiar with. I'm picturing surveillance as kind of like a survival sort of skill, but in terms of like tracking specifically. And investigation is, well, well, I mean, investigation, which exists in other games, a more specific version of perception. I do kind of want this character to be a bit stealthy. But um, if we're talking like a level one character, maybe they like skills will increase as you play, right? Yes. So uh, in terms of like, I think investigation is more of like what happened here, right? Mm -hmm. Or what is this thing versus surveillance is more of like, where is this thing or where is this location? And I'm going to go find it. Mm -hmm. Right. So one is the figuring out the spot and the other one's going to a thing. <laughs> I think they could be good at investigation and surveillance, and then maybe over time they'll be good at co covert if they survive enough missions for them to level up. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to put investigation and surveillance up because they're a, a quiet observer. Yes. <laughs> Fades in the shadow. <laughs> Ooh. And then three of them at zero. Probably connection. Probably authority. Probably negotiation. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> that seems about right. I was thinking like some of the more physical ones, like coordination and conditioning, but um, I feel like if there's going to be something that they're specifically bad at, it's going to be more of the communicative stuff. That kind of makes sense. Like their their whole power is manifest of a way. Like it sounds like they're manifesting a way of like not socializing. So yeah, these are all social things. <laughs> mm. Okay, cool. There is that's all right. So now we got the skills all set. Next is the agendas. Do so these agendas are kind of like your class or like archetype of a psychic ghost hunter <laughs> person, right? So like normally you'd pick like fighter or whatever or something like that or just like a you know what I mean or like rogue in like fantasy RPGs, right? Um. Uh, this would be more like like your class. That's how I see them as. So they all have abilities that like 
when you're in a specific situation, you gain a benefit usually, or you can pull off some feat or something. So for me, I chose like Firebug because Firebug was like kind of this cool cooperative thing. And I chose Weak Spot. So, you know, when an ally performs a violent force, uh, sorry, performs violence or forceful action, you can grant them plus one die on their action and plus one slash on any talisman on a success. You have one use of this ability, which resets when you rest, and you can only apply it one, uh, once at a time. So I kind of like call out a shot and basically just make something more impactful and easier to hit or to, to do, right? And uh, on top of like it being your class, it's kind of like the way that you get XP. So um, when you pick an agenda, when you're creating your exorcist, uh, you pick an ability from the agenda, you gain a new ability from your active agenda by spending an advance. Oh, sorry, that's when you're advancing. Um, so agendas have two agenda items, a normal and a bold one. If you fulfill the normal agenda item at the end of the session, you get one XP. If you fulfill at least one of your bolded items, uh, you get one XP or gain or again for two or more. Uh, often these require a different approach than your agenda would otherwise encourage. So like for the idea would be like, oh, the beast. So get into a fight because, you know, you're really good at fighting and doing like the violence. Right. But uh, if you hold back, um, you can potentially get more XP. So every time you hold back, you get more XP. Okay. So let's check out these agendas. Um, we don't really have to go into all of their abilities and stuff, but maybe we can just look at like, like the names and their items. Oh, you want to go through them? Like Beast? Like Yeah, like we can just go through them real quick. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, like I don't want to get into every single one's abilities, but if I see one that I like, we'll maybe talk about the abilities. I was looking at Loner a moment ago, so... Okay, so Beast, you are a badass, man. <laughs> <laughs> and you beat people up. <laughs> so you're... <laughs> and you're really good at the violence. Every, every one of these things has to do with violence or injuring somebody. Yeah, your your normal item would be getting into a fight, but like you mentioned before, your bolded one where you get more XP is if you hold back in a situation. Mm -hmm. There's doomed, which you can only pick if you have a sin mark. Although if it's your first agenda, you can start with a sin mark. Yeah, and sin marks are like the cool super psychic abilities that you don't really want because if you get too many sin marks, you just become a sin. Uh, but they also give you like, you know, a cool claw attack or like a tail or like you can have cool eyes or see through walls and stuff like that you got the cool mutation but at the cost of your humanity yeah with your items being either demonstrate your humanity or the molded one being demonstrate your distance from humanity which i mean i do kind of like that we might have to come back to that Ooh. uh there's firebug where your items are solve problems creatively or the bolded one being take the simple solution which uh, that's an interesting i would i would have assumed that being creative would have been more encouraged there but i guess being more direct is the thing that sort of goes against how your agenda would naturally work yeah well it's like you know the the hard way and the easy way it's like you could take the easy way but it usually ends up being like worse <laughs> for people uh for instance uh my character during the session um there was you know uh, a bunch of house like the, the the sin was basically stealing stuff from houses and making them collapse in this area but then the sin didn't touch one house and there's like this big radius of like destroyed houses that fell fell down but then this one lone house was there and there was this one pregnant lady there so basically it was like we had to talk to the pregnant lady and my so or like trying to figure out what's going on there so a creative solution would have been like sneaking in and doing all this stuff and maybe like reading her notebook or something right but my simple solution was to just knock on the door and was like hey we're here for the medallion like, <laughs> like <laughs> And then it worked. It was really hard. And then it was it was kind of sketched for a little bit because obviously she's a lone pregnant lady just trying to live her life. And there's some weird spooky dude in a trench coat. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> but basically um, I told the truth in a way that would make sense to her. <laughs> so I doesn't lie, but I did stretch things a little bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can see how that would... <laughs> definitely worth more XP though. Um, 
you have your guardian who um, you protect your people or your bolded item is to leave nobody behind. Uh, the loner, which I was kind of just glancing some of the abilities of and I think I might actually want this. Uh, you demonstrate your superior skill or for your bolded item, you let the mask slip, which is very vague in a way that I really like. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you do actually care or maybe you're like not as stone cold as you, you really uh, believe you are <laughs> okay there are actually more of these than I thought there were but you have your oh, yeah, there's, a, there's a couple of them <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm just looking at the timer maybe we don't have time to go over all of them that might actually be worth an episode into itself yeah, for sure. Just just super quick. Okay, hardline, you are the the spy or like the the agent. Like it's like gives you a bunch of stuff to make you feel like you're a, an agent. The machine. So this one is that you know you 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 go further uh, than anybody else. <laughs> you work hard. You, you you play hard, and you get you get a lot done. The moth is kind of like an investigative one, or actually no, sorry, it's like. It's it's actually has to really do with sin, uh, and sin overflow, and that kind of stuff, and kind of mastering the the sin powers. Torch is the leader one, so you get a lot of stuff when you're leading. Uh, Temperance is the healer archetype, apparently, <laughs> and that kind of support role. The shadow, uh, apparently, it's just being a rival and like working with somebody, but not actually working with them, but just being better than them. So basically, you're Gary Oak. The Gary Oak oh, class. Wow. <laughs> Sorcerer, you are Silrona from <laughs> Tim Delver campaigns, where you are really good at blasty blasty and, and using all of the cool sin magics. Songbird is you kind of getting people to do stuff for you, get getting people to, to manipulating people, getting people to do stuff for you, that kind of stuff. And Demon is the money one where you get rich <laughs> uh, you can literally pay money to use psychic powers so <laughs> like it's the the put money in get get stuff out and then the other ones is like you get extra money you're the money guy super bad bad one notes on these things <laughs> And there's, there's a couple of special ones, like Survivor and Departed, that, um, yeah, you know what, maybe oh. we should do an agenda episode at some point. <laughs> yeah, we should, we should. Because those do look very interesting, um, especially the Departed one, I'm kind of wondering how that would work. Yeah, I'm kind of looking at the loner, I'm looking at things like, so some of the abilities of the loner is a silent strike, which is pretty straightforward, but I think could work for this character. But there's one, just the ability is called It's Nothing where you can ignore taking an injury by saying it's nothing. Um, that seems kind of up this character's alley. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, and just one ability is okay. just called I'll do it myself. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of seeing it. I'm kind of vibing with it. I'm really vibing with it right now. Mm, nice. I like Rook. I'm always, I'm always interested in having abilities that will... Help me help my allies to do cool things. I don't know when I became the supportive person, but yeah, I'm just like, yeah, go get them, team. Like, I'm like, I'm like Tom from that meme where he says the cat's in. He's like, that's what I want to be. I wanna be Tom's <laughs> <cat's in." laughs> yeah, Rook is like, when you successfully set up an ally, you can take a stress to set up another ally of your choice. Uh, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, the, I, my character in Mutants and Masterminds does something similar where he can help make an enemy vulnerable to attacks and I can choose who they're vulnerable to. Uh, of course, because he's a superhero, he doesn't have to like stress himself out over it. He just does that because he's a cool backflipping archer guy. But I was going to say, is this Bowman? <laughs> this is indeed like Bowman. Bowman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Look, cool. everybody has Not eyes and I have arrows. <laughs> everybody else has eyes and I have arrows. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's that's a pretty good one. Uh, okay, cool. Now we're going to go into the blasphemies. Uh, you choose one of these bad boys, and you choose a power from this. You get like a passive ability, and you get a power, or two powers, I should say, from, from the list. So, so I choose one of the blasphemies, and then I get to choose a, choose the powers from there, or? 
Yeah, so you choose two powers from the blasphemies. Um, I, <laughs> the way Tom put out the book, it's very, it's hard. Sometimes I'm like, where? Where is everything? It's too, <laughs> it's too cool to read. But yeah, so like for instance, intention, iron soul, it says passive, and you get that passive ability, as well as you get two other abilities that are listed here. They're in the boxes. <laughs> oh, I understand. Okay, so they all come with a passive, and then you choose two of the other ones. Okay. Yeah. So, like, agendas are, like, your class, again, you know, with their cool skills and stats of that can be applicable throughout, like, either, you know, narrative stuff or in, like, a combat scenario. And then, like, blasphemies are, like, what wizard are you? <laughs> All right? Like, <laughs> like your okay. spell list, essentially. So, tension, powerful fields of force, uh, ardents, manipulate potential energy flux tap into the ebb and flow of time that one sounds cool not for this character but that one does sound cool uh vector yeah. imbue anything you touch with a strong burst of velocity we'll save that one for the uh dominic toretto character i was gonna say dude like you guys gotta make dom <laughs> you just make dom in every game <laughs> like, <laughs> that, would that would actually that would be a be... fun series <laughs> oh my god why haven't we done this before <laughs> no, we could definitely. Okay, let's. <laughs> we'll put that in the bank because now I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about other games. I'm trying to focus on this one, but no, we can. We can <laughs> definitely do that. I, there's definitely ways. I'm, okay, we'll figure out Pathfinder Dom another time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Now we have. There is uh, gates. Gate? Yeah, where you yeah. manipulate space, uh, smother, to suppress things like friction, sound, and light. Whisper, your shadow talks to you. It knows the future. That's very cool. <laughs> Edit, change yourself, the world, or others by pulling from different possible realities. I did see that one. I did kind of like it. Uh, there was another one that I kind of liked as well. Bind, where you bind weak sins to your service and use them as servants or weapons. Jaunt, where you separate body and soul, perception and flesh. Palace, this is the other one I was uh, sort of interested in where the contents of your mind are a tangible place you can visit uh, and sympathy pull on the innate connections to humans or objects yeah human tools or objects so like you're like the i was gonna say like psychic iron man but that's not right uh <laughs> you're like the i was gonna call them full bringers from bleach if anybody gets that reference out in the crowd but calvin definitely doesn't know <laughs> nope <laughs> So let's see what we got here. I guess let's look at these passive abilities. Where's edit? Edit? Oh, there it is. Okay. It's like, it's not in the, it's on the table of contents. Uh, I think that, I can't tell if that's like by design. Like, <laughs> like you know, like. <laughs> oh, that would be very funny. It would actually, <laughs> it would actually be really funny if edit yeah, specifically okay. was not in the table of contents, just looking at it now. Uh, if, if Tom ever watched this episode or when we get him on, I have to ask because there's like a few things about this game. I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you crazy man. <laughs> so, Mimic, oh, yeah. uh, you can alter and mirror things about your parents. Uh, you can change any of the following things about yourself when resting uh, with variations to your original body. Body features, height and weight, aesthetic, such as facial features, skin, color, uh, hair, gender. Oh, presentation. Oh, and age down to 13 and up to 88. Uh, you look faintly from similar, like a distant relative to yourself. So your clothes always change to fit you, though you cannot alter them. This doesn't change anything about your skills, general abilities, and cannot restore missing body parts or hide sin marks or scars Ew, this is pretty pretty good <laughs> yeah i'm kind of thinking like maybe this person didn't actually alter memories of people maybe they just like let slip in different portions of a reality where they never existed and that messed with them like perceptions of other people like the person mm. is the same it's just that now their brain has been like swapped with the memory i guess it's more of the memory thing still i'll have to see what the actual powers do but i'm kind of liking this i did look at palace as well where like you create like a sanctum um like a place where people can rest in 
And I did like the mental powers. It's just, it doesn't really fit with what I had in mind for this character. Mm -hmm. But edit though, and especially the ability to just like modify their appearance as well. Like maybe in subtle ways, like they were just changing themselves or the world around them, swapping it with different realities until it ended up at a point where it was like, this, the, the, you're, you're, the people around you don't know you because they're from a reality where you never existed. Or maybe you, maybe this person shunted themselves into another reality by accident. And then yeah, that could be it. The Kane or, or agency was like, we'll be having none of that, thank you. <laughs> or maybe they're just they're sh shoving different people into different realities. I don't know. Or it could just be like a more of like a gradual kind of overlapping kind of nonsense. Oh my um, gosh! Like if they were just accidentally like swapping people with versions of those people from another reality and they didn't notice like it just happened in like the blink of an eye and suddenly they're replaced with someone who has largely the same life but one specific thing is that this character doesn't exist in that reality but everything else yeah. is like <laughs> mostly the same <laughs> and everybody's like uh, who are you <laughs> <laughs> and then there's just some other reality out there where they're like hey whatever happened to so and so Gonna, and then they're gonna be like, I don't know that person. Like, you don't have a sister. What are you talking about? What havoc is that? Oh my okay, gosh. cool. <laughs> okay, this sounds terrible. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so yeah, so now you get the passive mimic. Uh, you can alter yourself. Uh, maybe you're altering yourself, or maybe you're just altering the people around you. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, but to alternate re realities are currently unproven, says Kane Doctor. Oh, of course. It's, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> we must never, we must never let them know. I did see one of the powers, absurd, where you swap mm -hmm. a certain amount based on your category, which is your power level, I guess. Um, yeah. In, in simplest terms, um, you swap an amount of humans or exorcists with different versions of themselves from an alternate timeline. You have to roll psyche for this power to take effect on hostile targets. Um, only spending a psyche burst on success. Um, you can change what the target is wearing and the physical appearance of the targets. It does say targets retain their memories. I'm just kind of thinking of a version of this power where it just did not work correctly. Yeah, I mean, like this is when you're you're not you were you were just like first getting used to your powers, so maybe it just didn't work. Yeah, this is like something that this person can do on purpose. Now that they know what was happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's also copy, which I thought was pretty cool. I don't know how useful it would be, but you create a temporary exact copy of a human or exorcist, uh, creates a doppelganger of them that you can give simple instructions to, and then after a certain amount of time, it'll dissolve into a pale sludge. Oh, this is so cool. You could just like <laughs> knock out a guard and go send the, <laughs> and like copy them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, all, all these sound awesome. I'm just going through them right now. Filter. Oh, Filter. uniform Filter. is also really good. Ooh. You make a brief edit to yourself, and it makes you officially part of any profession or group with more than five members without any necessary uniform equipment or anything else to, uh, and uh, like you, you go alter reality to like make yourself part of that group. Even if people don't particularly remember you, they get the vague sense that you were a member. Oh, if this person was better at social skills, I feel like uniform would work better. Hmm. I mean, but it could also uh, work in your favor because maybe that's how you can justify a lot of like getting into places, right? Oh, people yeah, don't cause... really remember who you are, but they're like, no, you should be here, but like, they don't know who you are. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was kind of uh, the thing when I was working at the airport. As long as I had that uh, bright vest on, I could just do whatever I wanted, basically. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, you know, lab coat and, and clipboard uh, thing where you just walk into a place and people just believe that you're in charge and you have to do your... your no, one, no one would just sneak in like that. Like, they don't ask any questions. <laughs> I do like absurd. I do like copy. I do like uniform. I'm trying to just, like, decide which two I want to get though because <laughs> I'm sure I can change them at some point in the future or add new ones in the future 
Yeah, for sure. I think that uniform would be pretty fun for like an espionage thing. Copy is pretty fun because you could get some really silly shenanigans. And your your agenda is like, what was your agenda power again? Loner. So it was... Right. Um, how many abilities would I get from the agenda again? Just one. Just one. All right. I probably should have made a decision on that because I did like It's Nothing. I did like Rook. I thought there'd be something uh, there to like draw on, uh, so you can like maybe make the choice. <laughs> oh yeah, between the other things. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if it was me, I would just pick copy and uniform, like because that seems to be pretty funny. Because you can like <laughs> get yourself into a place, and then be like, "Oh hey, are you Jim?" And then you're like, "No, I'm not Jim." And then like knock him out and then make a copy of Jim. I was like, now you're Jim. And then, yep. like, you and Jim. <laughs> and then Jim can cover for you because because everyone's gonna be like, hey, are you are you supposed to be here? And you're like, I think you're supposed to be here, but I don't know who you are. And Jim's like Jim's like, Steve, this is Steve, man. He's been here for so long. He's like, oh okay. And then you guys just walk into anywhere. <laughs> that does sound cool. I just feel like my character isn't good enough at socializing for that to work. Listen, that's that's what Jim's for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you make a copy of Jim and then Jim <laughs> gets you into places and you don't have to talk to them because what if like for the agenda if if the character took silent strike for the ability so they can so you can knock Jim out and make a copy of him yeah okay I think I'm gonna need at least <laughs> one social skill for this character to work I need at least one of those to not be zero <laughs> I mean, I don't think so. Solid Snake never had any social skills, and he knocked out a bunch <laughs> of people. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> okay. I would argue that dude has, like, negative social skills. So, yeah, let's go with Uniform, let's go with Copy, and then Silent Strike for the Agenda ability. All right, Super Spy. <laughs> Who can rewrite the world? <laughs> 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 I like how weird this game is yes so yeah okay cool so yeah and then that's it really because the way that items work is that you have kit points and kit points anytime you need something it's usually worth like one or two kit points like if you needed a weapon you don't have to say that you have a weapon on hand you just use two kit points and then you say i pull out my shotgun and then you go Ch -ch right like <laughs> you don't have to keep track of inventory that way Although I do have to say that 20 matches and a notebook, uh, they cost one kit point, which is half of a gun. And I don't know how that equates. Like, <laughs> like I was like, oh, this is weird. <laughs> matches are, 20 matches are super expensive in terms of carrying capacity. I, I mean, it's just like a matchbook, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, but you would have to get scripts for that, which is like the real currency. So like one is like the care your your theoretical carrying capacity, but scripts is actually like the currency in the game. That's where you go and spend money on stuff, okay. like um, like uh, comfort and possessions. <laughs> like one cell phone, <laughs> but you have to pay extra for internet. And this is the goal. Yeah, I guess at uh, first level, the character isn't going to have much of that. No, I think at first level, you get uh, standard issue, service uniform, sash, shoes, buckle for a cape. And it's not tailored to fit, and your shoes are recycled. So I think we went over the last time that you're just... <laughs> you don't even get nice shoes until you pay money for it. <laughs> yeah, you get the shoes of whichever agent was the last one to die. Yeah. Okay, so I, I I love I love the fact that they have these these accessories have no benefit mechanically, but uh, will make you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like my dream is to buy a suit uh, for Griffin. <laughs> so I've got my skills, agenda, and blasphemies. Is there anything else I need to fill in? Because there is like the. I don't know if I, well, I... I guess they wouldn't have sin marks yet because we didn't do anything that required that yet. No, you don't need any sin marks. But you do require a name, so... Well, yeah. Um, so I, I just... I, I opened up a vampire name generator because I felt like that would be the right vibe. 
Dracu Blair. <laughs> Blair card. Something yeah. like Horatio or Julius or Aurora's pretty good. Or I don't know. Evangeline's pretty good. Oh, Liliana is pretty good actually. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> Alright, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> all right so yeah here's there that's that's how you create a character in kane it's, it's actually a pretty chill experience if you have like an idea or you just kind of make the flow happen I, I think it's really fun to talk when you're doing it with other people in your group and mm. like the gm and stuff like that like that session zero kind of thing because you guys can like strategize a little bit or like see how what everybody else is picking and maybe like just carve out your own path or just you know uh, choose choose uh, the the explodey one because you like explosions like whatever you want. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I feel like the game like the, it's definitely on, it feels like it's on purpose that the character creation is so easy. Yeah, for sure. Because I feel like you're gonna die a lot <laughs> because it's hard. <laughs> it's a not. But that's fun of the game. Uh, when your character dies, they can choose either they want to become a monster or die with their humanity, and then you start a new character, and uh, the world keeps turning. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I am going to have to put this character into the Foundry module for Kane, which uh, just recently found out was a thing. Um, and there'll be a link below to it on YouTube. I haven't tested it out myself, but it's a Foundry module for Kane uh, created by Diabeats96 on GitHub. So if you want to check that out, there's a link to it below. Um, as well as there's going to be another link to, in, to a mission in Kane. Operation Weeping Mountain, uh, written by Eld, who we had on the show a while ago to talk about uh, map making, and who we have to bring back to talk about Soar at some point when we stop being distracted by other stuff. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna have to play catch up. Maybe, maybe do like a couple of episodes in a week uh, to to cut down our list a little bit. We were pretty bad during the summer because that's just the sour hours we work. But yeah, <laughs> we have a long list of back of things to uh, our backlogs of ideas and, and episodes. Uh, but if there's anything you guys want us to talk about, reach out to us uh, in the comments below or at our website. We definitely have people reaching out telling us to touch on some topics. If there's anything you guys want to hear us talk about, we'll, we, will, we will do it and put it on the list and get to it eventually. <laughs> Promise. <laughs> Yes, we will. We 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 will. Uh, like, if you do want us to look at certain games, we will make sure to make note of those. We do have some that are that should be on the list. So yes, yeah. Roman, is there anything else you want to mention about character creation in Kane? I don't know. I mean, you could just have a bunch of JoJo's characters. I think so. That's a pretty good sign a game's good, right? <laughs> don't tempt me. We st- <laughs> Let's just focus on doing yeah. that Dominic Toretto in every game episode. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, <laughs> Dominic Toretto in every game. Oh, man, what, what sounds would, awesome. What would the muscle car of Lancer be? Because he, he's not just going to be fast. He has, to, he has to be furious as well. Ooh, it, the muscle car? Yeah, like... I mean, he only lives life a quarter mile at a time. Like, it must be the Nelson, dog. Like, this thing's like the fastest thing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we, 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 got, we got a basis. We've got something to work with there. Um, <laughs> all right, folks, thanks a ton for listening. If you want to check out more from the channel, either check us out on YouTube or Spotify or other podcast platforms. The Win With Dice podcast is all about tabletop RPGs, so if you're into that, definitely check out any of the episodes we have or check out our website for more information. And if you are on YouTube, please check out the gaming streams. Currently playing through Alan Wake 2, Armored Core 6, and Baldur's Gate 3. And yeah, having a lot of fun with each of those games. Really, I I think Alan Wake 2 is going to wrap up soon. Um, And when it does, we're going to get into some pretty fun Fallout stuff is the plan. Cool. Yeah. I think like Alan Wake, that game is basically kind of like Kane. It's like that paranormal stuff. So yeah. Uh-oh. I wonder if I could make a character similar to Alan Wake. To, I mean, I. To Alan Wake. Because <laughs> edit is kind of the thing that he does in a way. Ooh. Ooh. I'm glad. Maybe I'm not glad these specific that, powers, yeah. but yeah. I know. Sick. Thanks, Tom, for making a game for the baddies. That's. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so yeah, uh, definitely check out those gaming streams. Uh, additionally, I want to shout out all the people linked below. Uh, we, of course, you mentioned Elves and all of the other Lancer writers and creators that we have linked below if you want to check out their work for the Lancer RPG. Also, shout out to the Untold Stories Project, where I'm going to be at on Wednesdays as we're wrapping up our uh, Freedom League Dark series before going into one-shot season. And what else? I think that's about it. Uh, is there anything else we need to mention before we head out of here? I don't think so. All right. Well, for all of our... Uh, oh, gosh, what's a good outro here? <laughs> For all of our GMs and players out there who are unknowingly editing the world around them with their psychic powers, uh, just remember to keep on winning with dice, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>